Hello everybody and welcome to part two of the full stack web app in Python using Django and React. If you have made it here, give yourself a pat on the back. Not many people make it past the first video, so I hope you guys are going to stick around for the rest of them. But anyways, let's get started. In this video, we're going to be dealing with Django REST framework. We're going to be building some API endpoints and we're actually going to be building our first database model. All right, so let's get started by creating our model and then we will look at the API endpoint. All right, so I'm here in my models.py file from my API folder. Let's just quickly discuss what a model actually is. So in a standard database, you would have a table, you would have rows and columns in those tables, and well, that's how you would store information. Now, that's no different in Django, but when we actually go ahead and create a table, what we're gonna be doing is creating a model instead. So what Django allows us to do is write Python code, and then it will interpret that Python code and automatically perform all of the database operations for us. So essentially, it's just a layer of abstraction. It makes it a lot easier for us as Python developers to write database related related stuff. And well, that's pretty much all there is to it. So uh, we're going to go inside of our models here. And the first model, and actually the only model we're going to have for right now is a room model. Now, remember our app, we want to group similar users together or group users together in a room. That room will have control over the host's music, right? Like that's what we're doing for this app. We're having one person hosting or playing the music and then other people join in on this room and well, they can control that music. So first thing we need to do is make a class. I'm going to say class room and inside of here, we're going to inherit from models dot model. So this is just telling us, hey, this is going to be a model and notice that models is already imported at the top of our file. Now inside of here, what we're going to do is define the fields that we want to have for our room. So essentially the pieces of information we want to store for each room. Now I'm just going to tell you what these are, but try to think to yourself, what would we really need for a room? What is a room? Like what comprises or makes up a room? Well, the first thing we're going to have is a code. This is going to be a unique code that identifies the room. So we're going to say code equals models dot char field like that and character field is saying okay and sorry this is models not model this is going to hold a bunch of characters so our code is going to store a bunch of characters and well that's the way it works now inside of here we're going to say max underscore length this is a required argument to the char field and we're going to say what is the maximum length that this field can be I'm going to say that it can be eight and then we can set a default value if we wanted to. I'm going to set default. I'll actually change this to something else later, but for right now, we'll leave it at blank. And then we can say unique equals true. What I'm typing here is pretty much the constraints on this field. So I'm saying, OK, what do I want this field to look like and what constraints or things do I want to make sure are satisfied when I create a new code? in my room. Well, first we want it to be unique. We want the maximum length to be eight and the default value will be, well, something we'll, we'll put that in a second. Now, before we move on, I need to take a quick pause and thank the sponsor of this video and this series, which is Algo Expert. Algo Expert is the coding interview prep platform that I use to prepare for both my Microsoft and Shopify interviews. It's great because not only does it have a great selection of high quality practice questions, but each of them come with full video explanations and detailed code walkthroughs. Start mastering coding interview questions by checking out Algo Expert from the link in the description and use the code tech with Tim for a discount on the platform. Next, each room is going to have a host. So a host is going to be equal to a models dot char field. Uh, the max length is actually going to be 50 and we're going to set unique equal to true as well. We're only going to have at most one host for one room. So one host cannot have multiple rooms. That's a rule that we're going to set here. Now, what is the host field? Well, the host field is going to store some kind of information essentially that relates to our host or that links back to the host. I can't really discuss what that is right now because it's beyond the scope of what we're doing in this tutorial, but we just need to keep track of who the host is. Next, we're going to have a field that says guest can pause. This essentially is the permission that says, OK, is the guest allowed to pause the music or play the music? This is going to be equal to models dot Boolean field. And we're just going to say no equals false, which means we must pass a value and we'll say default equals false as well. Again, if you want to look at any of these fields, what you can do is just go look at the Django documentation. There's a bunch of different ones that you can use, but I will show you kind of most of the main ones here. Next, we're going to say votes underscore to skip. And that's going to be equal to models dot integer field. Inside of the integer field, I'm going to say null equals 
false and we can set a default value for this as well. I'm just going to set it to two, but you can set it to whatever you want. Uh, actually, probably one makes more sense as our default. Then lastly, I'm going to add a field called created at, and this is going to be equal to models dot date time field. And this one has a really cool argument. Auto now add equals true. This means we never have to pass the date time to our object. Whenever we create a new room, it will automatically add the date and time that it was created at. So I know I went fast through this, but these are the five attributes or kind of pieces of information for each room. And these are some of the constraints on those pieces of information. Again, I found these fields just by going to the Django doc documentation and looking them up. Now, of course, you could add more if you wanted to. And you also add methods on this model. So we could say something like define like is host this, right? And then we take, you know, like some host and then we check if that's that. We can add whatever we want. And the basic rule in Django is that we want to have fat models and thin views. Now it's not going to be too relevant for us, but that pretty much means put most of your logic on your models. That's what Django is trying to tell us to do. Now I told you we were going to do something for code. So my code for the room, I want to be random and I want it to be unique. So every time we create a room, I want to come up with some random eight digit code that represents that room. And that's what we'll use to figure out, hey, you know, can we join this room <laughs> or how, how we identify the room, right? That, that's what we're going to do. So what I need to do is define a function here that can generate that code for me. So I'm going to call this generate unique code. And inside of here, we will say length and set this equal to whatever we want the length of the code to be. Now we could set it to eight characters. We can also set it to be something like six. Let's just leave it at six and we'll leave the max length at eight in case in the future, maybe we run out of codes and we want to have more. Anyways, we'll say length equals six. And then I'm going to say while true and inside of here, I'm going to try to generate a bunch of codes until I find one that's unique. So I'll show you how this works, but this is cool because it's an opportunity for me to show you how we can actually query and look at all of the rooms in our database. So first, we're just going to go up top and I'm going to import string like that. And I'm also going to import random. This is because we need to use this to actually generate the random code. Next, I'm going to say code equals and then I'm going to do a blank string dot join and inside of here I'm going to say random dot choices plural and I'll go through this line after because it's a lot and I'm going to say string dot ascii underscore uppercase that's going to give me all of the ascii characters uppercase and the length what do I want that to be well I want that to be so sorry k which is the length is going to be equal to length now I know this is confusing but this will generate a random code that is k length so in this case six and that only contains the uppercase ascii characters that's what this will do you don't really have to understand exactly why that works but we're just going to say code equals that and that will give us that code next we're going to make sure that this code actually is unique and the way we can do this is by looking at all of the rooms in our database and checking if they have a code like this so i'm going to say if room dot objects which technically gives me or yeah, plural, which technically gives me all of the room objects and then dot filter. This is saying, OK, I want to filter all of these room objects by what? Well, I want to filter it by code and check if the code is equal to the code we have right here. Now I'm going to count this because what this will do is return to me a list of all of the objects that meet this criteria. Then I'm going to say if dot count is equal to zero, then we're good. We can break and we can return our code. So hopefully that makes sense. That generates the random code. Uh, and yeah, I won't go too much more in depth in this function. I think you guys get that. Uh, obviously, if this is not true, then we will just keep generating more codes until well, one is unique. All right, so that's good for models. Now what we need to do since we modified the database and we added a new model is we need to make migrations. So we're going to open up our terminal and inside of here. We're going to say Python manage.py and then make migrations and you can see we've made the migration so migrations for api and you see what it says we created the room model now that we made those migrations we need to apply them so we're going to say python manage.py migrate now boom go ahead apply all migrations notice api is here apply the migrations and we are good to go all right, so now that we have this migration done, we've created our model, we want to set up an API view. This is different from a standard HTML view. I'll talk about the difference in a second that can return to us all of the rooms that are currently in our database. 
The reason for this is we have to remember that right now what we're trying to do is we're trying to program a backend. And what I mean by backend is just a server that essentially can handle information, so handle requests, and then give some type of valid response. Now, if we think about it, it would make sense that our front end would want to be able to access or check specific rooms, right? Say a user tries to join a room, well, it needs to look in the back end and say, okay, you know, does that room exist? So we need to create some kind of endpoint that can return to us information about the rooms in a format that makes sense. We're probably not going to return HTML code. We probably want to return something, say, like JSON format, where we have key value pairs that our front end can really easily handle, look at it and, and do things with. Now, you'll see how that works as we go through. But the first thing I need to do is create what's known as a serializer class. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new file called serializers, plural, dot pi. And what a serializer does is it will take our model, in this case, a room that has all of this Python related code. So it has actually, you know, code equals this, host equal this, whatever. It, it's in Python and it will translate this room into a JSON response. You'll see how that works, but essentially it will just take all of these keys here. It will turn them into strings and then it will say, you know, colon and then whatever the actual value is that's stored here. It just does that for us. Anyways, what we need to do inside of our serializers.py file is we're going to say from rest underscore framework import serializers. And then we're going to make a class. We're going to say class room serializer. This is going to extend serializers dot model serializer. And inside of here, we're going to have a class. We're going to say class meta. And I'm not going to really describe how this works, but we need to define the model that we want to serialize and that we need to import. So we're going to say from dot models import room and we're going to say model equals room. And then we're going to say fields equals. And here we're going to list all of the fields that we want to include in the output or in the serialization. Now, in this case, I want all of them. So I'm just going to say ID and I'll talk about ID in a sec code host guest underscore can underscore pause and finally votes to skip. Now notice that these strings here match what I have in my model. So code matches up with let's get rid of test here with code host matches up with host guest can pause matches up with that. They're named the exact same thing. That's important. Now we also can return created at I don't want to forget that one. Uh, so we'll return created at right there. But you're probably wondering why I have this ID. Well, on each of our models, we have something called a primary key. And the primary key is some unique integer, typically, that can identify uh, the model uh, in relation to all the other models. So it's always unique, usually an integer, and it will be automatically created when we actually insert a new model or insert, in this case, I guess, a new room into our database. So even though I didn't define ID here, there's automatically an ID field on every single model. So if we want to see that ID field, I can just put ID here and well, it will return that information to us. Again, this will all make more sense as we get through. But let's go to our views.py now. We have our room serializer. I'm going to get rid of this main function. What we're going to do is write what's known as an API view that will actually let us view a list of all of the different rooms. So the first thing I'm going to do is return this or remove this HTTP. Sorry, we're going to say from rest framework and we're going to import generics like that. So with a plural and what this will allow us to do is create a class that inherits from a generic API view again, all gibberish until we start getting into it. So first I'm going to say class room view and then inside of here, I'm going to inherit from the generics dot API or sorry dot create API view. Now what this will do is allow us not only to view all of the different rooms, but actually create a room. And all I have to give to this view is the following thing, a query set, which is going to be equal to room dot objects dot all and a serializer class, which is going to be equal to you guessed it, the serializer class we just made. So in here, we're going to say from dot serializers import room serializer, and that's going to be equal to room serializer. Now I'm well aware and sorry, we also need to import room. So we're going to say from dot models import room. Now I'm well aware this all looks like gibberish, but essentially what this is, is a view that's already set up to return to us 
all of the different rooms. So that's what this will do if we simply tell it the query set, which essentially is what do we want to return? Well, from here, we want to return all of the room objects. That's what we're giving it. And then we give it a serializer class that says, okay, these are the rooms. Now, how do I convert this into some format that I can actually return? Well, we use the room serializer, which again is inherits from serializers .model serializer that just knows how to handle this kind of stuff. And now all we have to do that, that we have this view is we have to link our URL to it. So it's all going to come together, but let's go to our URLs page here. Instead of importing main, now let's import that class that we just made called room view. We can have both uh, functions and classes being our views here. I'm going to say room view. And now here, I'm going to put room view, but I'm going to add one thing dot as view. So this is just saying, hey, take this class and actually give me the view for it. That, that's what that is doing. So we're going to put that there. We're going to run our server and we're going to pray that everything works fine. Seems we get an error. Uh, no module named API dot model. Ah, my bad, guys. Let's go into serializers here and rename this models. That's correct. Uh, and see if that fixes it. OK, so that did fix it. Let's go to our browser now and we can see that we get nothing because we haven't gone to slash API. So let's go to slash API. And again, we still get nothing. Eh? Uh, was there another path there? Let's have a look in our URLs. Ah, it's the home page. My bad. OK, so slash API slash home and look what we get. Some fancy web page that tells us uh, detail method get not allowed. OK, that's fine because this view is actually the wrong one. Uh, my apologies. We'll fix it in a second. But anyways, you get the idea that simple little uh, class we wrote. So if we have a look at it here in view actually allows us to have a view that well looks something like this. And notice that these fields right here, code, host, guest can pause, vote to skip, are the ones that we had in our serializer class that we're able to actually put information into. So what I'll do first, just so that it makes sense when we go to the other type of view, is I'll make a room. So I'm going to say code, let's just go like, you know, A, B, C, D, E, F. Let's say host is just Tim like that. Guest can pause, sure, and votes to skip. Let's make that three. Let's post that request and oh, there we go. Now have a look. We get that information right here in this view. So it says, okay, you just created a room. It has ID one. This is the code. This is the host. Guests can pause. This is the votes to skip. And this is when it was created at. Okay, so I accidentally refreshed the page and the thing went away, but hopefully you get the idea. That is how we create a room. And there you go. You were able to see it before. I know it went away because I refreshed, but you were able to see that indeed that did work. And well, there we go. All right. So now that we have that, let me just show you how we can change this view. So we created one room and we'll change this to list API view now. And you'll notice that if I go back to this URL and I refresh, it doesn't give me that post form anymore. It just gives me a list of all of the different rooms that are in my database. So this is extremely useful. We'll be using these kind of views for a majority of this tutorial. And this is how we set up a REST API. We have a way to actually add information to the database, which you just saw. Then we have a way to retrieve it. Now, obviously, I'm doing this using the user interface. I'm using the browser. But when we start setting up React, we'll be doing this through requests. So we'll just be sending, say, like a fetch request to an endpoint on the server, and then that will return to us some information, not in this nice fancy format with all this cool, you know, buttons and UI, but it will give us just this raw data right here, which we'll be able to process and then display on the screen. So hopefully that is all clear, but that is what I wanted to show you in this tutorial, how we set up a serializer, how we set up a view, how we get the models going, all that kind of stuff. That's what we need to do. So now we actually have an API endpoint at where's my URLs file here, uh, slash API slash home. And what that does is returns uh, the room view dot as view. And depending on what generic we use as the inheritance here, we will get a different thing showing up. Now quickly, I'm just going to change this to be room because I think it makes more sense that we have this be room rather than be home. But that is all I wanted to show you in this tutorial. So if you guys enjoyed, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and in the next video, we'll get into some more cool stuff.